All right, we're gonna um, start in just another few minutes. In the meantime, if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, this uh, uh, Q&A session is also for an opportunity for you to get to know us and us to get to know you. Um, so if you can include your name, pronouns, land acknowledgement, um, any accessibility needs, as well as uh, at Players Foundation, we always start out with um, a prompt of some kind. And if you wanna share um, what new play or writer is inspiring you right now, we'd love to hear that. Uh, so um, we would encourage those who are here today, uh, please use the chat to start introducing yourself. Um, I will introduce myself again in a few minutes, but um, once again, my name is Heather Kalinsky, she, her. I am the literary manager at Playwrights Foundation. Um, I'm currently on the land of the Lene Lenape, Lenape uh, colonially known as South Jersey. Um, and uh, I work virtually on the land of the Ramatusha Lene people at Playwrights Foundation. Um, and uh, you will also find um, a land acknowledgement on Playwrights Foundation's website, as well as this year, we have started to pay a land tax to uh, the community. Um, also, um, uh, if you have any accessibility needs um, uh, with uh, staff too, we have accessibility needs as well. I'm immunocompromised as well as I'm recovering from a surgery. So um, I'm doing this seated and uh, as we go through our staff and members, they will share as well. Um, uh, we're gonna share a, a little bit of a different prompt because uh, we felt like if we shared what playwrights are inspired of us, we could say all of them. Um, uh, there's so many writers uh, that have already started applying that I'm so excited to read. Um, we're gonna just share, um, uh, Jaquetta, um, how did you phrase the question yesterday in our meeting? Um, um so we're gonna share what color do we fill today excuse me so what color do we fill today all right and for everyone hi i am all right do you want me to start yeah with... why don't you start sure okay so hi everyone i'm jaquetta farrar the artistic producer here at the playwrights foundation um i am on the Ohlone land in Oakland, California. I'm originally, excuse me, from New Jersey. And I am here to assist. I'm excited to kind of join this process with you all and learn and as assist you as I go. And I guess for me to start with what color I feel today, I'm gonna say I feel yellow is my color of the day because I feel a little bit sunny and joyful and excited. So I'm going to pass it along, I think, to Tessa. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tessa Saito King, she, her pronouns. I am originally from uh, Marin County in the Bay Area, which is coastal Miwok territory, but I uh, am currently in London, England. And my access needs are currently met. And I feel kind of dolphin gray steely blue today. And I will pass it back to Heather. Oh, that is very, very specific. Um, you know, <laughs> as I said yesterday, I think I need to look up color theory again um, because I, yesterday I was feeling a little bit more of a bright yellow as well, but I'm trying to be like more of a cool blue or green. Um, there we go in the chat. I'm seeing um, folks introduce themselves. That makes me very happy. So that that makes me a there we go. Someone's feeling mauve, um, and that is a theater seat color. Very good answer. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try to be like more of like a cool calm blue today as I answer your questions. Um, so yeah, the um, all right. So here we are, Playwrights Foundation. And and uh, we want to give this answer to your questions about the application process, uh, which this year um, has a little fun twist of that we have a new software program. So in a moment, Tessa is going to take you through that. Um, but before that, just to share like a general overview of, um, of what you're applying for. Um, this is an opportunity for summer 2023. 
um, to uh, have an opportunity to have your play workshopped in the Bay Area. We bring the writers out to the Bay Area and we set you up with a director and a dramaturg process. Us. Um, and we hope that gives you an opportunity to work on your play. Um, I also just want to share that, like, as far as I'm going to go back for a second, as far as the team goes, um, uh, we will also have another staff member joining us um, a little later in the summer. Um, we have this new position of the BAPF play selection advisor. So they are not here yet, and we choose someone from our alumni community. Um, great. I'm excited to see some more names in the chat. Um, yeah, so um, uh, as many of you know, BAPF, which is part of Playwrights Foundation, is our longest running program. We're going into our 46th year. Um, and as you can see from our website, um, we uh, try to articulate what makes a play eligible, um, as well as um, what helps uh, go into the application process um, for this year as well on our application page. They, we have a frequently asked question section, and we really want to encourage you to take a look at that section. Um, it has everything for from how is the goal statement used and what tips can you offer to make it strong. And the reason why, for me, start on us as an institution to explain to you why we're asking you to write this thing, um, because I know writers don't like writing artistic statements, and it's always like every application looks different. Um, and so why do we ask for this? Um, it is on us to explain um, what we're looking for, because um, our goal at Playwrights Foundation is to empower playwrights. And I know the application process does not feel empowering at all. Um, and we're here today to just share with you um, any information that would help empower you further in this application process. And we wanna leave a lot of time for question and answering. So I'm not gonna read everything on the website, but I do wanna make sure um, that um, you're uh, take a moment before you apply to take a look at the FAQ section. Um, we've added um, a lot um, in our drop downs to try to explain um, what we're looking for and how we can make the process easier, as well as what the staff is thinking about how this information is used. Um, another question that is always sort of um, uh, something to think about just is um, over the years, uh, the applications come with a fee um, and we try to explain with our values of transparency of why we ask for a fee um, and how that changed in 2020 to a sliding scale so that it can be affordable for many people and within reach. There's also fee waivers that you can request in our application, but something about why we ask for our fee is this year we're also explaining what our estimated costs are for our review process because we also pay our readers um, and uh, and our staff um, so we realize that not everybody has a capacity for the fee but um, so we offer a fee waiver um, in our application process but we do share on our website the cost of running a program like this where applications are open to all um, and you can come in at any point in your career. Um, so um, I want to encourage you to continue to look at this section, um, but also today is an opportunity for you to ask us questions. So I hope everyone here today, hi Xavier, hi Brent, um, uh, hi, Behar, um, everybody that's uh, introduced themselves in the chat. Um, I hope you get your questions answered and um, that you feel uh, more empowered to uh, fill out your application this year and that you're excited to be a part of the Bay Area Playwrights Foundation community in this way. Um, we real, uh, something that's really important to me is that our process is a community-centered decision-making process. And so if you have any questions about the evaluation process as well, I'm happy to answer. So um, with that, uh, Tessa, would you like to uh, start sharing some of the logistics of how to fill out our application this year? Yes, gladly. So I will be sharing my screen with you all and walking you through the process, um, starting with getting onto our website. So 
So as I prepare to share screen, um, I'll just say, so you can apply directly through our website or through the link that you may have received in an email and you will we'll find it taking you to our programs page. So you can see here that there is a handy counter telling you how many applications have already been fully received. We are capping at 600, um, regardless of kind of where that falls date wise with our uh, deadline. And we will update this every few days and closer to as the numbers increase so that we can keep you all informed. This page um, will also have all of the FAQs on the process as a whole and also just about the festival itself. So if you have any questions, this is always a good place to start looking. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the click to apply. So if you click this, it will take you to what is our main um, application page landing page. So you can see here, I've already created my sign in, but if you don't, you'll just click below here for the need an account and you'll sign up. Um, and through the sign up process, you'll receive some emails asking you um, to verify that you are indeed a human, which we hope that you all are, and uh, as well setting up a password for you to use, which we recommend uh, logging down somewhere so that it saves you down the line if you're needing to get in and can't remember what you've decided. So I will log in right here. Oh, and I bet it actually wants me to sign up for a new account so you all can see this. So here we will sign up and I'll sign up with the password I still have. Um, let's make it. There we go. And I'll sign up here. And it should load and then let me go into the system. Great. So you can see this is then what it's going to take you through. You will create an applicant profile. And so this profile is so that we can get to know you a bit, but also mainly it's just so that we can make sure that as we're referencing your scripts, we have the correct person tied to it as there may be scripts with similar names um, and we will need to know who you are again on a human level. So if I go through here and I can put in all my information. And then we do suggest signing up for our newsletter. Um, that way you can be informed of all of the updates and information, as well as any other opportunities that come up throughout the rest of the year. And then you'll fill out the demographic information. This is optional. However, it does help us um, in terms of if there are aspects of your script that you want a specific uh, read on. So for example, if you're writing a script that's uh, in a different language or referencing a certain um, culture or community, it does help us as a reference to be able to turn to this instead of having to reach out to you um, and send a bunch of emails your way. So I'm going to be skipping it for now uh, just to get through the process, but we do suggest if you have the time and capacity putting your information in there. Um, I'll also jump in and say, and this is also in our FAQ section on the website, that an important part of the demographic information and why we collect it is that we do try to build a diverse uh, national committee reading the applications and we will take a look at this information and um, try to reach out to um, build our national committee off of the demographics so that our um, applicant pool and our reader pool uh, is uh, the reader pool is as diverse as the writers who apply that's important Yep, exactly. We want to make sure that we're being as inclusive and able to read your plays as you all intend them. So now I have my applicant profile is complete, as you'll see here. 
you do have the option to edit it, um, but we do suggest getting the profile out of the way before starting the application because one does tie to the other. So here you're going to see a get started, and this is where you will get started on your application. Um, it is color coded. So if it is in blue as it is now, then you'll see I it needs my attention. If it's in red, it means there's an error. That's very unlikely, um, but you know that's more of a technical side. And again, if anything technically um, is acting up, feel free to reach out to us. And then once it turns gray, which we'll see later, means that it is completely done and we are then reviewing it. So we'll get started with the application. Um, and actually, uh, Tessa, I'm just going to jump in and say um, as well how to reach out to us. Please reach out to the literary at playwrightsfoundation.org account. We do have other accounts. Sometimes we hear through people at hello at Playwrights Foundation. I don't manage that particular account and eventually it will get to me. But if you're trying to reach us quickly during the application process, please email us at the literary at Playwrights Foundation account. Thanks. Great. And Heather, if you want to, or Jaquetta, if you want to put that um, into the chat as well, so people can copy that over just to make sure that they have that on hand. So we're going to open up the application now. And you'll see the first few first name, last name, pen name, and email are all automatically filled from your application profile, which is why we suggest making sure you get that out of the way in the beginning. And then we will add the title of the play. So we'll do testing. Here, you'll tell us a bit about your play. So just a short synopsis, um, a few sentences that tells us what's the story, um, you know, what what's going on in this just a short summary that we again can reference quickly uh, what play this is or if we're looking for uh, certain types of plays to pass on to specific readers we can try and reference this um, but do know that we will be looking at an application in its entirety and not only referencing any singular aspect um, cast size again you'll put in a number here and this will just tell us how many actors there are. So to specify, this is about actors um, and not about parts. We are aware that sometimes there's double casting. So this is just the amount of humans who will be taking part in this. And then you'll upload your files. So we'll upload our files. This is our wonderful fundraiser that, oh, it has to be a PDF. Yes, we just switched this. So, um, PDF and your resume as well. And yeah, so you'll upload your script as you've just seen, uh, it needs to be in PDF format and then it can support um, high levels of uh, gigabytes and everything. So that shouldn't be an issue. Again, if you're having issues with um, uploading this, feel free to reach out to us, but it should take any PDF that, uh, that you try to give it. The resume, we ask the resume be kept to one to two pages. However, we do know that resumes vary. So um, if yours is leaking over a bit, don't stress about it. This is again, just for us to get to know you all as writers. Um, and to understand kind of where you're at and what your journey has been. So then after you uh, put forward all that information, we ask you to share what your hopes are in terms of working with us. So this is a developmental process and we really wanna know what you all are hoping to get from this. Um, so what your goals are, what you're wishing to do with this work. Um, and so this can be you know, a series of goals or a series of questions that you have that you want answered, um, areas of uh, research that you want to dive into, and just really what you what you need from us in terms of uh, what we can do to help uh, promote your work and uh, keep the story moving along, so to speak. Uh, if, and then, 
if it's all right, if we could take a pause, I just want to give yeah. this section a little bit more um, information and then actually ask uh, those who are here with us if they have any questions about this. Because again, I, I feel strongly that it's on us as an organization to kind of share with you how to make this section very strong. Um, so uh, it, it doesn't have to be super long. If you notice in the help text below, um, it doesn't have to be more than 500 words. Um, but how we use this and when we use this might also help understand like why we ask for it is that we don't ask currently for an artistic statement. Um, we're asking very specifically about um, how we can help you with this play that you're writing so that the play is centered. Um, we also, um, and, and again, this is also on our FAQ section, but since we're here today live in person, we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, the first round readers do not see this information. However, at the next round at the staff level in our um, vetting process, we take a look at what the readers say in their reports the playwright needs to work on. And often we will then look at the three areas the plays the playwright wants us to look on to see like what is the playwright's intent, because if the readers say the play needs to work on this and that and the other thing, but the playwright is saying, but I want to work on this, we're often trying to assess um, well, we're a playwright-centered organization, and we want to help the writer in what, what their wishes and their goals are, not what the readers think. And if there is sort of a mismatch, we start to think about like, okay, well, uh, but the writer wants to work on this while they're here. Um, and that's, that might be different from what the readers are seeing the play needs work on. And that's so trying to synthesize all those ideas is why this section is so important to us. And then um, when writers do get into our program, and Jaquetta, you've been through this um, as you've started with us this year, um, we start out asking every writer about what their goals are for the process. Because again, like the playwright, it, what's a little kind of reverse about this whole application process in my mind is that like, once you get here, the playwright is at the center of the process and we're following your goals your ideas um and so we start out actually starting with this section that you've written to us in your application so Jaquetta, is there anything about how you've observed the goals um, with the writers this year um that uh that might help uh everyone understand what makes uh this section strong Yes. Hi, everyone. And thank you for joining us and everyone who came in just a little bit later. I'm Jaquetta Farrar, the artistic producer for the Playwrights Foundation. And so um, to answer Heather's question, my experience thus far has a lot to do with the character development and the relationships between characters that I've been seeing. Um, a lot of the playwrights that have been chosen for this year's cohort have really been discovering that the details come with the relationship, right? And how um, some things may be a little bit more monologue than dialogue. And so they're, they're shifting that and trying to fine tune it now in the development of their workshop. So just with goals in general, as you're writing, I think um, it's easy sometimes for us to start with monologues as writers. But to think about as we're building our characters, what interactions are they going to have that doesn't include them talking out to the audience, but kind of how they um, interconnect with each other throughout and kind of build that relationship. If, if that yeah, I, I would say uh, character centered goals are really helpful because these are play specific goals, not as much career centered goals, um, because assume that like once you get into the process, it, whether you're an early career, mid career, or more experienced writer, that we're here to help you with your career. Um, sometimes I get in the goal section notes about like, well, I want your help connecting me to a production. I'm like, yes, well, that's what we're here to give you. But this section in particular is about your play itself. So the more detailed and specific you are about where you are in your own assessment of what the play needs is very helpful. So thank you, um, Tessa, for letting us take a pause so we can kind of share a little bit more um, about that. And then again, in our question and answer uh, system, if you wanna uh, 
uh, section. If you want to go back and ask us more questions about the section, we're happy to keep talking about this. So let's continue. Great. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, this is, yeah, it's a big part of the application process. And like Heather and Jaquetta said, we want you all to feel confident and comfortable filling this out. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to jot them down and we're more than happy to answer them uh, at the end of this walkthrough. So again, the second part of this is if, is there anything you'd like us to know um, and to help understand the script? Again, that's just understand, um, you know, is there a certain group or community that you would really like to get an eye on it? Um, have you had, you know, an experience in, that you're trying to answer um, in terms of moving this play forward? Uh, so yeah, again, it's just for you all to communicate with us in terms of your needs and your uh, own questions with your work. So then the next question is select the stage of your career. So we have early, mid, and experienced as well as an other. Um, Heather, I'm going to pass this off to you to talk a little bit more about these individual categories. Yes, um, which I am then going to refer back um, to the, uh, we have this information on our application page. Uh, we get this information straight from the Dramatist Guild. Um, and if you remember the Dramatist Guild, these definitions seem familiar to you. Um, and we know that it's hard to like, you know, for many people to say, well, I've been writing for a while, but um, we find that the Dramatist Guild, um, we also, um, uh, when our team all started, sat down and had a couple of meetings with the Dramatist Guild and um, assessed these questions. So what's written on our website, um, please know that we're uh, trying to be very much in compliance with uh, how the Dramatist Guild assesses these uh, career categories. But um, you are always, always um, able to ask us if you're in any doubt while you're filling out your application, again, write the literary at Playwrights Foundation account. Um, we all work part time, but we still will get back to you in a time. Great, thank you. Um, and then the last question on the application phase is, are you a resident of the Bay Area? Which is yes, sometimes, or no. Um, again, they're a bit self-explanatory, but if you have questions, we do talk a bit more about it in our FAQs, I believe. Um, yeah. Although, yeah, I'll, I'll share why this is important, is that um, if you look on our website under our purpose, vision, and values, you'll see under our values, uh, commitment to the local is an important value um, for Playwrights Foundation. And um, it's important that uh, we know, are you a resident of Bay Area? Um, in a clear way. And we do, if you click on uh, yes, Tess, I believe there's a couple further drop down options. Um, or also sometimes share about your connection to the Bay Area. Um, because um, also the way we get grants sometimes uh, involves, uh, you know, how are we supporting local writers? And I think many organizations um, over the years uh, and I think especially during the pandemic have been reassessing their commitment to the local. Um, so we always um, have opportunities for local writers. Um, also, if you apply to the Bay Area Playwrights Festival, um, that is how also we can get to know you for some of our other programs, which we have for local writers. Um, so, so if you could share with us very clearly Great, yep, thank you for that. So you'll see, similarly, we have the drop down question uh, if you select other in terms of career. Now, this is the first part of the application done. It's pretty, you know, it's not too long, we hope, uh, not too daunting. And then the next part is our payment. So as Heather mentioned briefly at the beginning, we do have an application fee. However, we do want to make this as accessible to everyone um, as possible and do not want to create any barriers, especially financially based. So uh, the fee you can see is on a sliding scale from $5 to $45. However, you can also request a fee waiver. Um, and so if you do request a fee waiver, regardless of if you are or if you are not, 
you will select the amount you would pay regardless. Um, and then down here, you can either then select if you would like to ask for this fee to be waived, or if you're happy to continue forward with the application fee. Um, for reference, this application fee is used in large part to help uh, pay our readers. We have a large, 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 uh, vast quantity of readers across the country um, who give up their time very graciously to help us get through all of your lovely scripts so that everyone uh, can ensure their play is read uh, and read by you know a fair grouping of people. But we have, uh, in terms of trying to promote EDI, accessibility, transparency, uh, and just equality and fair pay, we have been instituting um, slight stipends for these. And uh, we're hoping to continue this. But again, it's greatly uh, helped if we do get some application fees paid. But again, if there's any difficulty, just request a fee waiver. And if you select to request a fee waiver, you'll see a few options here, um, including economic hardship or alum or a reader from previous season. And so some of you may be aware of this as an option already, uh, but it does exist. And again, if you select other, we'll ask for more information just so that we know that we are fully understanding uh, what's going on. And Heather, do you have anything else before I mark this application complete. Uh, just to also say that um, we love having playwrights in our reader community. Uh, and uh, again, uh, while we pay all our readers, we want to um, thank our playwrights who have served other playwrights by offering them a fee waiver. And I know many of uh, those who have been helping us out in the past years um, are starting to use their fee waivers now and that's always exciting. Um, it's being a reader is a great way to get to know us just like you came here today to see live people and not just a website. Um, but getting to know us as a reader we have community meetings and a variety of um, different events last year we even had internal play slams so we can hear each other's work while we were reading other plays. It's a really fun experience, um, but you can't be a reader and an applicant in the same year. So um, those of you who want to apply this year think about if you want to be a reader for us in the future. Great, thank you. So this is the application filled out. It is not yet complete, uh, which I will explain in a moment. I just wanted to point out before moving forward that we will send a survey, um, as it says down here, to all playwrights to collect feedback on the process. Um, as Heather mentioned earlier on, this is a new system that we are working with. So even more so now than ever, we greatly appreciate your feedback as we continue to try and make this as streamlined, easy and approachable for everyone involved. So then you'll see down at the bottom, there are two options. You can either save it as a draft in which case, you know, if you want to go partially through this, but you want to have more time with it, you can just save as a draft and return uh, to its current state, or you can then mark as complete. So I will mark mine as complete. And now what will happen is the application is complete. You'll see it here. You should see it if we go back to the home page. that you can see that the entry is in progress now. Um, and the reason why this is in blue rather than in gray, which means that it's fully through, is because we have to then go through the process of payment. So payment, after you mark your application as complete, you will then receive an email with the invoice or the fee waiver um, dependent on what you have selected. It, uh, we'll also then, you know, that will be a good marker of, uh, you'll get an email saying that you've completed the application and then you'll get an email for um, payment before that though. So it will help you uh, recognize that it has gone into our system, but please note that an application is not marked as complete until the payment part of it has been processed, whether that is through paying it yourself or through um, receiving an application fee waiver. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass it back to Heather, unless- yeah. 
And I would say on top of that, if you don't get an email, definitely check your spam inbox first. Um, sometimes emails from organizations go straight to spam. Um, if you still don't get it, you can always write the literary at playwrightsfoundation.org account, and we'll be here to try to walk you through and figure out technically what happened. Uh, so yeah, so also like, again, like we're, uh, we're not these mysterious figures. Uh, we're Heather, Tessa, and Jaquetta, and we are here for you. Like we want you happy. We want this process to be easy and transparent and understanding why we ask you to do the things we do. So um, with that, you can stop sharing screen. And this is the part where uh, we get to be put on the spot. And I'm excited to meet everybody and hear everybody's voices uh, because uh, I so enjoy getting to know your voice through your play. Um, but I'm always excited to uh, to hear you and hear what brought you here today. Um, so um, again, this is being recorded. Um, so you'll be sharing with other playwrights. We'll be putting this up on our website. Um, so um, hope everybody's okay with consent to be recorded. Um, for this uh, new training tool for this year's application process. Um, please thumbs up if you consent uh, to that, that you're gonna be on camera and uh, this will be a recording for other playwrights to benefit from your questions. So yeah, um, uh, that's fine, Maria, if you need to leave. Um, thank you for coming. We're still going to be here for another good 22 minutes, I believe. Uh, but yeah, and um, uh, when you, uh, it looks like, uh, Neva, you're raising your hand if you want to jump on in with a question. Yes. Hi, my name is Neva Hutchinson. Neva. Yes. And I lived in, in Redwood City for 34 years, and we recently moved to Windsor, which is south of Healdsburg. Are we still in the Bay Area, or do I put sometimes? or thank you for that question um uh and because uh i i do think this is a is something that you can always like email and ask us about as well as like putting a detail in your application um a lot of this answer specifically has to do with how we budget for um for our season the local writers or who we consider local we um we do need them to have local housing um and uh so i think uh last year i got a question about like hey i'm in sacramento but i've been a member of the bay area as a writer for a very long time and i identify a bay area writer the question is like but do you have um housing in the area um, for the residency if you get in. So um, that I think what, what would be really helpful is if you can indicate that, say like, mm, that might be too far for you to be driving into rehearsal every day. So mm -hmm. I guess like how we define as local as is, um, is again, I think your connection to the Bay Area is very strong. Like for example, um, uh, I grew up in the Philadelphia area. Um, and while my career has taken me all over the map, I still like identify as someone from Philly. Um, so, um, I would definitely identify as a Philly writer, but am I a Philly resident right now? No, I am not. So trying to indicate that um, in the application would be really helpful because uh, part of it has to do with our, the way we budget and track lines. Um, for the residency. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it's a great That's, question. I understand. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Who else? Uh, what brought you here today? Or what questions are on your mind, especially now that we've, we've shared? Uh, yeah. Uh, I also have another question. Um, I've had a play produced. I've had a few plays produced, short plays produced, one long play produced. Am I a midlife writer? <laughs> Sounds like you're having a midlife crisis. No, you're not. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so you've had one. So if I'm understanding correctly, you have one full length play produced, but you've had 10 minute was also produced or could you, can you clarify that for a little? 
Yeah. Um, at the at the Pear Theater for Pear Slices, I had several 10 minute plays produced. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had a play produced in San Francisco that is supposed to be produced in North Hollywood in February. Great, great. Um, I believe the Dramatist yeah. Guild counts via the full length plays. So um, I, I, especially since we're not a festival for 10 minute plays or one act plays, I would count by your full length play production record. Um, so okay. if it's three full length plays produced, yeah, um, to make it past the early career, I would still call yourself early career, but you can be early career at any age, as well as um, we do ask for resumes. Um, so we will see your other credits on your resumes as well. We do look at the resumes extensively at the staff level as well. So please list all your credits. Um, although what we do ask, um, just since we have a moment to share something about resumes, um, a lot of times I will get resumes that are very academic, um, like long, extensive six page uh, resumes. And while uh, uh, that's wonderful for your career, we do appreciate if it's more of a, like a playwright one to two page resume. You can include some other credits or even just like, here's my life experience, um, but we're not looking for a CV, um, which, uh, which academics and professors are looking for. No, um, this is a <laughs> practical institution and we're looking more for a, a, sh a shorter one to two page uh, writing focused. And, and again, it, but it could also include like other writing credits that are not playwriting. One of our um, uh, writers this year um, is uh, comes to us from poetry and fiction. Um, and those type of credits are also very meaningful to understand that you've worked in other genres besides playwriting. Um, and we're very excited to have writer who's had a long extensive career um, in fiction and novel writing um, and this is her first play um, so so that is also important to us as well to hear if you've written in other for, written in other forms of genres journalism etc great uh, other questions or other folks like to just say hello I had a question, if that's okay. Yeah, um, go for it. I, um, I'm just curious in terms of uh, our goals changing from the time we submit, particularly because we're being encouraged, and I think rightly so, to submit early because there's a limit on how many. And then to, um, to the point where we actually sit down to work. So I'm just Absolutely. a little bit interested in the kind of flexibility that you have because the play I'm thinking of submitting, I'm not gonna, I am not gonna stop at the point I submit it to you and not be working on it. You, you know Yeah, I mean? no, this is a great question because I view your development goals as, as a snapshot in a moment of time of where you are with the play right now. And if you do proceed on to the semi-finalist round, we then have a practice of asking for any script updates at that moment, as well as updated development goals. So that is when we ask for updates is if you are selected to move on to the semifinalist round. Um, and I, I mean, I, I do think that like uh, throughout the, what, what I'll, I'll also kind of say this is that, um, in general, I just like hearing what playwrights are up to, and you are always welcome. If you have applied to the Bay Area Playwrights Festival and you're like, I have a reading of this play in October, and we're not to the point yet where we've determined semifinalist, uh, send me the information of what the reading is. I always love hearing that, because um, even though it may not uh, directly affect your application process, we have a huge community of national committee readers and we have a virtual green room. And if I hear from a writer that they're having a workshop reading virtually or in person, uh, I have readers from all over the country, from Hawaii to New York and Maine and Texas, Florida, everywhere. Um, so uh, even some uh, readers abroad, 
Um, we had a reader from Spain one year, that was great. Um, and we will then post what we hear from the readers that you've had a workshop of this play. So again, like we, um, if this is a play that you're actively working on, um, we sort of have like other channels where you can share with us your updates. Um, so just like tell the literary email what's going on with you and your work. I'm happy to receive it and I will post it in our virtual green room. And we do have readers who are like excited to engage with uh, our applicants and we'll say, oh, I went to so-and-so's reading, you know, that's what they're looking for They're the activity of how they can support and be better advocates for the writers. So, um, so yeah, always feel free to share with us your news updates uh, uh, there. And then as far as the development goals go, we will only ask that of the playwrights who are moving on. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, Sarah, you had a question, correct? No, I didn't have a question. I'm just kind of taking it all in. I think you answered most of it for me, but just so thank you for this opportunity. Um, it's just nice to learn of new things. We have an incubating space that I'm part of here in Southern California. So when I got the information, I sent it out to all of the writers in our circle. So just, I love hearing what's, what's going on in other areas. Great. Well, thank Thanks. you for coming. It's it's lovely and beautiful where you're at right now. Um, it's raining where I am right now. So thanks for bringing oh. the sunshine. Well, so. I, um, I, I kind of have to stay out of my house right now because there's a lot going on and it's a safe space. <laughs> Great. Well, wonderful. We also want Playwrights Foundation to be a safe space for all of our writers. So um, we want to make this process um, you know, just accessible and available. And we're here. This is what we do. Um, we're here for you. And we want uh, you to feel like this is not a mysterious process. And what happens after it goes out there and I hit the apply button, uh, you can always reach out to us and chat with us and, and ask us questions. Um, anybody else here who's maybe just here to listen in or um, uh, want to um, just share anything out? Um, because uh, we have we had a couple questions that folks wrote us in advance, but uh, anybody else in the room like to introduce themselves or share? Um, I'm going to answer a couple questions that came written in. Uh, one was, uh, I have a solo musical, 90 minutes, full score, other parts, is it eligible? And I will say, unfortunately, at this moment, we are not a development center for musicals. We sometimes take plays with music. In fact, uh, two the, uh, summers ago, um, Tiger Beat by Kayla Mason Garvin, um, who ended up being our play selection advisor last year, um, was a play with music. And um, it was, it, the, the musical needs were very limited. Um, it, some of it had been composed prior uh, to the festival because we do not have opportunities for composition during the workshop process. It's just too fast um, during the process. So unfortunately, no, we don't uh, take musicals. Um, plays with music, some, sometimes it's also, it's always better just to ask us um, and we can share um, what you share with us. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so another person asked, I'm really curious what you were looking for in the goal statement in regards to specificity and how this is used in the consideration process. If I list concerns different from the readers, is this considered disagreement and is the play discarded? Um, I explained a bit about this earlier, but I'm happy to explain again because I don't want anybody to walk away with the impression of like, if the readers say something completely different from what you've written, do, does that disqualify you? Uh, no, because um, there are many other factors in the reports that tell us things. Like for example, the writers might be in disagreement with your development goals, but maybe they scored your play high. So in that case, yes, like, do you know what I mean? Like we would be doing more future reads. Um, there also might be something in the report where a reader is like, I just really wanna see this play now. 
So maybe they uh, picked out different elements of the play that they think need work on, but they're so excited about your play. Um, they are, because a lot of times what I, what really gets through to us is when the readers are so passionate about the play and we can tell, we can see that they get, um, uh, really passionate about it. And, um, and that is why also in our reader community, it's not a solo activity. Um, I, I think it's some other places, uh, just readers get sent plays and then they make decisions on their own. We have a very community centered pro process where um, we have community meetings on a regular basis where readers can get together and talk and get excited about what they're reading. We, we also have very uh, prescribed rules for that too. For example, we ask them not to talk about writer identities while they're in space together. We just talk and focus about the play. Um, we also have a Slack platform because culturally, Bay Area Players Festival, Players Foundation uses Slack to communicate. Um, and we have a whole robust, I mentioned that there's a virtual green room. Um, we host that on Slack as well. Um, so the readers are really there to get very passionate about your plays. And I would say um, that while those reports, what's written in there informs us as we then look at development goals, um, I think that uh, it's not the only thing that's going to say like, well, okay, you know, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, all of these decisions are subjective. They're tough. They're hard. Um, I, that's what I love about my job. It's hard. Um, we all get worked up and we're very passionate um, about what we read and what we do. Um, but I don't think that like, if the readers can't guess what your development goals are, that completely disqualifies you. That's, that's not exactly how it works, but thank you for asking that because I appreciate the opportunity to clarify what I mean. Um, so Brent, yep, I see something in the chat. Um, Brent can't be on camera, um, but okay, let's see. Uh, has a 10 day workshop of a play submitting the first in September possible to submit an updated post-workshop version of the script. Um, yeah, because we switched our timeline around that we're accepting plays now, um, I would say that by September, um, and this is also like me knocking on wood, <laughs> hopefully our readers have gotten through a majority of the scripts that we've been reading in the first round. So, um, and, uh, uh, I think our process will be at least like three quarters or 80% through just round one. Not that we're ready to notify anybody in September, but uh, I would just say, Brent, why don't you, you could always reach out and say like, have you read my script yet? Um, but I would say that might be a little too late with our timeline this year, but um, you're always able to ask us and reach out. Um, so, yep. Okay, great. Um, uh, thank you. Um, is there anybody else? Did I miss any questions in the chat? There, I do have one more question that was pre-written down. Um, anybody else? Again, like anything that I've said makes anybody questions pause as well as um, if anybody's out there watching the recording and you're like, wait, hmm, I'm not quite sure. Like, please clarify this, Heather happy to get into a, a further discussion with you. Just ask the literary email account um, because I'd rather you be clear than starting new rumors about like, oh my gosh, Flavors Foundation, blah, blah, this way. Like, so we're here, we're here to clarify things. Uh, and as Jaquetta said in the chat, you can always email the literary account. Um, all right, the last question is how much experience do you need? And another question that was written down is like, do you need to have started writing something? I'll take the second part of that question first. Uh, yes, at this particular moment in time, um, we do ask for a full finished play because I I think, and maybe Tessa, you can help answer this too. Uh, could you talk a little bit more just about like the process of the retreat and how much writing writers are able to do before the first presentation? Also, um, both Tessa and Jaquetta are playwrights themselves. So um, it, would you send us a play that's not totally finished based? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I can take that a little bit as well. This will be, I believe my sixth festival um, with BAPF. And yeah, so basically what you, you want to send us something, it doesn't, nothing's going to be finished as in ready to go on stage. Um, this is for development purposes. However, 
bear in mind that we will be reading a lot of scripts and we are looking at, uh, it is a meritocracy. So we're looking at, you know, the strength of the art, the, also the possibility of what what could happen if it has time and resources at its disposal. Um, but we do need to understand uh, what the piece is. And so whether, you know, everyone has a different idea of what's finished or what's written, but we will need something uh, that, you know, is 60 pages or longer, um, has some sort of story going on. And uh, we do look for, you know, for some boxes to already be checked and, um, Kind of showing the the strength and potential, uh, as well as understanding, you know, how we can also help to uh, help you all bring those out throughout the process. Um, as Heather mentioned, you will have a retreat in the beginning, in which case you uh, will be working on your scripts. You'll be talking with other artists and playwrights, um, figuring out what you want from your artistic teams, and then you'll leave there. You'll have a little bit of writing time, uh, go into rehearsals. And then after the first week of rehearsals, go into, uh, into the readings. And in between week one and week two, if you want, you have time to rewrite um, or you have time to just sit with your notes and think about it. Uh, but we do, we give time for rewrites, we give time for development, but in order to uh, make it to that point, we do also have to see that there is um, a show there that has been worked on and that uh, has, a clear vision of where you want to take it because this is for you to all uh, help carry your work forward and help breathe a bit uh, more life and direction into it. But in order to do that, we need to know that you all, uh, you know, want to carry it forward. Great. Um, does anybody, again, like uh, in the audience here today, have any further questions on that? Um, Uh, because I, we're happy to, to keep going on about that. But how am I bringing in the workshop process and what process look like? So um, if we're offering a retreat in the beginning, which is actually very active, um, and uh, the that process sometimes even our writers tell us is like seems to go by very quickly, and then you have a couple days of rehearsal. Um, before you go up in a public presentation type of way, you want to feel like your script is ready for that type of opportunity. Um, also, every once in a while I hear rumors of like, well, sometimes I leave things that I hope are uh, holes that would encourage a company to continue to, I don't, I don't know how you do that actually, but some, it, it gets back to us every year that that's a thing. Um, and the script isn't as finished as it could be um, to try to engage with us. Well, our readers are very smart and they, they always ask really smart questions of the play. And I would say, just trust that we have a lot of theater professionals looking at your scripts. Um, and so, uh, so please do your best to uh, send us something that you feel um, is ready to be shared. Uh, let's see, I think there's another, like, it can't be on camera question. No, I think. Uh, let's see. I think there was also like the first part of the question that I can get to really quickly, which is like, how much experience do you need? Uh, this is sort of, uh, if nobody else has any other questions, a great one to end on, is that we really do, um, uh, I, you can see it also in the writers we've chosen this year, um, look for writers with from many different experiences. Um, as I said, we have uh, one writer who's uh, very experienced in other fields, but this is her first play. We have another writer this year who is in a TV and film writer's room. Um, they, there's some um, playwrights that do have MFA degrees. There are some playwrights who don't. So as far as like, we really want to encourage whatever your experience is, if you've written a play and you're excited to share that, it will get read here fully twice by theater professionals, um, that is um, something that we can guarantee for you. And, um, uh, you know, and, and we are looking for a diverse cohort of playwrights who are here. Um, and it's something that in our uh, multi-step 
uh, process of selection, we're always discussing of like making sure that uh, creating a cohort of um, writers with different backgrounds and experiences will hopefully um, help each other um, while they're in residency with us. So I uh, hope that's a helpful answer and hope we've been clear for you today. Tessa and Jaquetta, is there anything else we wanna share before we sign off? No, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, some of these names pop up and to see what your work is. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for taking some time out of your day, um, as well as thank you for all the writers who applied even in the first 24 hours. I'm very excited to see uh, names that I know and names that I don't appear in our inboxes. And please, uh, if you have a play you would like to share, um, we're here for you. All right. Um, literary at thirdacefoundation.org is the fastest way to reach us. All right. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Bye. Take care.